Thanks for tuning in and being a part of our online worship community. We are so glad that you've decided to spend your time worshiping with us today. In the beginning, God. Every story has a beginning. That's how the Bible, the story of God and His people, His story and our story begins. In the beginning, God. He is the Alpha, the author and creator of all things. Can you imagine? He created and still creates everything, including you and me. All things. That's a lot of things. So right now we invite you to have a seat, get a cup of coffee, grab your Bible or your Bible app, and join us as we start our journey with God today from the beginning. Okay, anybody up for a fun word? You know, the best words are the ones that are the most fun to say. Tohu wavohu. That's Hebrew. That was the language the Old Testament was written in. And here's what that looks like. Here, can you say that with me? Tohu wavohu. Now, I didn't exactly spell it exactly right uh, because I didn't have enough of these. So I used this one instead because it kind of looks like this. But you get the picture. Okay, so say that with me now. Tohu Wavohu. That means formless and empty. Here, I have a way that you can kind of understand this. You have stuff that's tohu, formless, at your house. Do any of you have one of these? This box of mixed up Legos. Look at it, it's chaos. What could you make from this? Isn't it amazing that you can take this and make this out of it? That you could bring order from chaos that you could make something with purpose from something that's so disorganized, that's so tohu. This gives us one picture of creation. God didn't need the instruction book. He designed it how he wanted it. And you know what? It was good. But there's something more amazing. It's impressive to get this from this, but that you could make this from this. Because creation was tohu and wavohu, formless and empty. There wasn't anything there, not a molecule, not an atom, not a neutron. It was tohu wavohu. You want to say that again with me? Tohu wavohu. We can't make something from nothing, but God did. Even more impressive than a big Lego set. God created everything that makes up you and me. And everything we can see or measure, every molecule or atom, everything we can detect with radio waves or telescopes, all the stuff that makes Bluetooth work, everything, all of it. He made it all from tohu wavohu. Now, is that a reason to worship God and to know how great he is? Yes. So when your family prays today, give God thanks for everything that he has made, including you. See if everybody can list five things and not have a single repeat. Because together we can say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All right, you guys ready to read a story? Okay, this is the first account of God's creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault and the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to the various kinds, and it was so. 
On the sixth day, God said, let us make mankind in our own image, in our likeness, so that he may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Feel the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. Then they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. His story, our story. Let me tell you a story, a story about when our first child, Rachel, was born. Now, I admit that I didn't know much then about babies. I still don't. But what I thought I knew was that babies should look like their parents, right? Now, my mom, my sister, my brother, and I, we all have blonde hair. And the first picture I ever saw of myself as an infant, I had blonde hair. So I assumed that our children would be born with blonde hair. Now, I don't need anyone to give me a lecture about recessive and dominant genes and color pigmentation or any of that. Babies should resemble their parents. So, when Rachel was born at 4.01 p.m. on that February the 18th, the first thing I noticed was not her gender. I noticed the color of her hair. It wasn't blonde. It was brown. It was dark brown. How could that be? She did not look like me. I was shocked. But you know, you know who she looked like? She looked like her mother, Lori, a brunette. Oh, was Rachel beautiful. The most beautiful baby you have ever seen. Or at least that's what her dad said. When she was born, I smiled. Tears of joy ran down my face. She looked like at least one of us. And then a few months later, guess what? Her hair turned blonde like mine. Now, that's my story, and that's Rachel's story. But there's a much bigger story. It's about God's story and your story. And that story is true. And that story begins in the very beginning when God created humanity. In the first book of the Bible, the book called Genesis, which means beginning, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, God was not just hoping that somehow we would look like him. He made certain that we would look like him. He deliberately made us in his image. But God wasn't talking about hair color. See, you are a reflection of God. When people see you, they should say, wow, you look like your dad. You look like your heavenly father. You see, like God, you can reason and your reasoning should lead you to make choices that God would make. And because you look like God, you will choose right over wrong, good instead of evil. 
And because you look like God, you will take responsibility just like God does. You will care not only for yourself, but you will care for all of creation. You will care for the environment and you will care for every other human in his creation. That's your responsibility because you look like God. How you use your responsibility shows what you look like. You know, just like a new dad smiles and maybe sheds a few tears when he sees his child being born, God does that over you because you look like him. Now, your sin and my sin has clouded that image and smudged that reflection, but you are still a part of his story. But let's make sure that we get this right. You are not the focal point of the story. You are not the main character. Notice how scripture begins. In the beginning, God. God. Before everything else. And as you continue to read in the first chapter of Genesis, it is all about who God is and what God does. God creates. And when God creates, he doesn't need anything else or use anything else to create. The word create is used solely for God and about what God does. God creates. We make. Everything is from God. God creates all by himself. He creates out of nothing. You know, without God, then there is no truth. Without God, There is no basis for declaring something right or wrong. Without God, the universe is an accident. There is no design. This world, including you, is not a combination of a cosmic catastrophe, some accident where some blind random forces come together, where nothing times nobody somehow equals everything. The world is not an accident where there's no truth and no purpose. In the beginning, God... God creates by his word. God said, let there be light. And there was light. That's not how it works for me. When I say let there be light, I have to get up and turn on the light switch. But God says it, and it is so. God names. He named the light day, and he called the darkness night. Parents name their child. You didn't ask the hospital to name your child, and you certainly didn't ask your crazy Uncle Harry to name your child. This was your child, so you named your child. And God names his creation, and God names you, and God calls you his child. God admires. God took a step closer to what he made, and then he took a step back, and he looked at the beautiful plants and the flowers and stars in the sky, the brightly colored birds and the soft furry animals. He admired what he had done and God said, it is good. And God enjoys his creation. You are good. This first chapter of Genesis is an incredible piece of poetry. There's rhythm, there's verse and refrain. It's kind of like a hymn. Do you remember the hymn, How Great Thou Art? There's a verse. And then there's always after that verse a refrain. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Well, that's how Genesis 1 is. It's beautiful poetry. It's a song. The next chapter, Genesis chapter 2, also describes the same creation account. But this one does it in a story form, not poetry. With even more attention given to the creation of humanity. Now, I want to give you two cautions. First one is, just because there are two different chapters, two different descriptions of creation, one poetry and the other a story form, a narrative, don't pit one chapter against the other. Maybe you went to a college and you took a class in religious studies about the Bible as literature, and you compared and contrasted the first two chapters of Genesis and your professor reached the conclusion that they were contradictory. As a result, they are neither true or accurate. That's shallow thinking. Elsewhere in Scripture, for example, in the account of the Exodus, or in Judges 4 and 5, there is a story, the narrative, the account of what happened, accompanied by another chapter of poetry and song. 
don't pit them against each other. The second caution, just because one is poetry and one is in story form, don't conclude that God's creation is not true, that it did not happen. The purpose of these chapters is not designed to give you the age of the earth, it is not designed to give you a specific timeline and chronology. It is designed so that you would say exactly what the author of the New Testament book of Hebrews said. That by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. And to say exactly what John, Jesus' friend, said, that through the word, through Jesus, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Or as Martin Luther himself wrote, I believe that God has made me and all that exists. Now, those are the cautions. Don't deny science. Good scientists disagree. But science does not answer the ultimate questions about who God is, what is truth, what is our design, and our purpose. And that's what Genesis is about. You see, this is about God's story, and you're in God's story. You and all of humanity are the highlight of God's creation. Not the snow-capped mountains, not the clear waters, not the thunderous waterfalls or the adorable pet. They're valuable and they're beautiful, but you, humanity, you are the highlight. See, look at Genesis chapter 1. God saved the best for last. Only humanity is created in God's image. Or chapter 2. God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God only does that for humanity. Humanity is a highlight of God's creation. You are the highlight of God's creation. Each person is created in God's image. Not just Adam and Eve, but you. God wants you in a story. And not just you, but every person. That every person matters to God. The person next to you, the person who lives in your neighborhood, each one of them. The person in North St. Louis, the unborn child, the senior with dementia. Each person has dignity. Each person has worth. None of us is worthless. All of us are valuable. No one is more valuable than another. Since everyone is made in the image of God, we then have the responsibility to care for and to pursue justice for everyone. So where there is brokenness and neglect, when there is a disregard for life, we have a responsibility to speak up for others. Your value does not come from yourself. Your value does not come from what other people say about you. Your value comes from God. So that everyone is lovable and lovely because God loves you and God values you. Wow, what a story. Out of the chaos and emptiness, out of the disorder and darkness, God created a perfect world. Everything and everyone was in harmony and unity. But as we will see more next week, the chaos returned. The evidence is all around us that this creation is unraveling. But notice what God did. Jesus' friend John described it in our reading today. That Jesus, the Word, became flesh. That Jesus, the Word, is life. Jesus, the Word, is the light. And he shines in the darkness, the chaos, in this unraveling world. But the darkness has not understood it. And so Jesus, the Word, spoke. He brought order out of that chaos. That Jesus, the Word, spoke and people were healed. And Jesus, the Word, spoke and the storm-whipped waters were calmed. And Jesus, the Word, spoke and people torn by sin and shame were forgiven and restored. And Jesus, the Word, spoke and people whose image of God had been smudged and stained, they started to once again look more and more like God. 
And that's why Paul wrote that now, no matter what happens to you or what's happening in our world, no matter how hard life is, when you love God, that God is working in all things to once again conform us to the image, the likeness of his son, Jesus. God created you to look like him. Jesus came to restore you so that you would look like him. You know, even though I was a naive new parent, maybe I wasn't wrong after all. Children look like their parents. Last week, I was looking through some old papers and I found a picture of me that I had never seen before. It was a picture of me when I was a newborn at the hospital. Guess what? I wasn't born with blonde hair after all. I was born with brown hair, dark brown hair. Then after a few months, it turned blonde, just like Rachel's. She did look like me after all. And God created you to look like him. That's his purpose, that you would know him and look like him because you are a part of his story. Let's be honest. Many times I don't look like God. His image is smudged and stained. Would you pray with me? God, you made me to look like you, but my actions don't reflect you. My life is filled with flaws and brokenness and sin. I have failed to take responsibility and to value all of life and everyone's life. Please restore me. Make me to look more like Jesus. Here's the good news. You are a part of God's story. And the Father sent his own Son, Jesus, the Word. And the Word became flesh and dwelt and lived among us. He is full of grace and truth. Into the darkness of your life, he shines his light. He forgives you. He restores you. So that you look more and more like Jesus. Amen. creation of water, earth, and sky The heavens are your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of
So I encourage you, if you call Webster Gardens your home, that you bring an offering to the Lord as part of our worship. And this isn't something that we do under obligation or because we're compelled to, but it's a joyful response to God and his goodness to us. And what a great giving response that you've offered during this past year. Why don't you check out this video? Thank you. Thank you, Webster Gardens, for your generosity this last year. Do you know this? Our giving grew by 2.6% in 2020 over 2019. And as a result, so many different ministry efforts happened this last year, despite the pandemic. Thanks for being so generous. You know, together, this last year, we created care community groups. We did that because we wanted to support our neighbors during the pandemic. And so our Webster Garden small groups and our care communities collectively used $25,000 in COVID grants. As a result, people received food and people received household items and financial assistance was shared with individuals and so many organizations that were in need throughout this difficult time. Thanks for being generous. God used you this last year in so many significant ways. We also made numerous pivots in our worship efforts so that individuals and families could worship with us. We want everybody to know and enjoy God in worship. And whether that's live in person or worshiping at home online, those efforts were significant as so many people joined together to worship with us, even during this pandemic. You know, it's important for us as a church that everybody reads and reflects on Scripture. And one of the things that happened this last year is that we combined our Grow Deep with the Version Bible app so that people would read Scripture every day and that people would engage in community with each other as they read Scripture. We celebrate how many of you are using Scripture with your friends so that you together grow in discipleship. You know, during this last Christmas season, we celebrate your generosity. One of our important partners in ministry is Casas Por Cristo. And so we designated that our giving through the giving tree would be then shared with Casas Por Cristo so that families in Mexico would receive needed homes. We were unable to send servant mission teams down to Mexico, and so the staff and the people in Mexico built those homes. Over $30,000 was given so that we would serve and share the gospel with our partners there in Casas Por Cristo. Thank you. Thank you. Webster Gardens, you look like God because you are generous like God. Thank you. You can bring your offering to the Lord by texting LCWG to 77977 using our app or our website, or you can mail your offering as well. Would you also let us know that you worshiped with us today by completing a communication card? You can get that sent right to your phone by texting WGHello to the number 31996, and you'll receive a link to our communication card. Let's pray. Lord, our value does not come from ourselves. It comes from you. You created us in your image, you breathe life into us, and you give us meaning, and you give us value. And even those times that our lives haven't reflected your image, you sent Jesus to restore us. Change our perspective when we look at ourselves. Let us know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And then Holy Spirit, make us look like the Father, so that our actions look like your actions, and our words sound like your words. Forgive us when we belittle or when we disregard other people. Guide us to treat everyone we know with the dignity that comes from being created in your image. That everyone we see is someone who you sent your son to restore. Lord, we know that your desire is that everyone would call you their true father, their heavenly father through your son Jesus. So in his name and as he taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Now, everything that's happened today, everything that you've heard, everything that has been written, it points to Jesus and it is for this one purpose. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Thanks again for joining us in worship. We here at Webster Gardens hope that you are emboldened and encouraged in your faith today. If you enjoyed your online worship experience with us, or if you found it to be valuable in some way, we would ask that you share the link with someone you know. We also want to encourage you to click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.